Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Today, thousands of men and women are loading up tools into their Haas mills, equipped with side mount tool changers. Now, some of these machines are tiny and some aren't so small at all. But what they all share is a common control that allows you to load and set up your tools easily. So stick around. We're gonna show you how you can set up large tools and uh, we're gonna show you how that side mount tool changer gets work done. On Haas mills with umbrella style tool changers, you simply load up a tool into the spindle. Now the next time you call a tool change, the control is going to put that tool away into a spot, a pocket that matches that tool number. Tool 1, pocket 1. Tool 2, pocket 2. Now if you've got a couple large diameter mills, uh, like a big shell mill, and you don't want them to bump into each other, you simply leave a space in between them. That's an umbrella style tool changer. When loading tools up into a Haas mill with a side mount tool changer, we still load the tool through the spindle. But when we command a tool change, the control is not gonna put that tool into the same empty pocket each time, like an umbrella style tool changer. And there's a reason for this. Because this method is faster, period. By allowing the control to put away tools in the next available pocket, the time it takes to, to do a tool change is drastically reduced. While one tool is running, this carousel can be rotating, getting the next tool ready for use. For more information on this, take a look at our tool pre-staging video. When I call up tool one from within a program or from MDI, the control is always 100% of the time gonna put tool one into the spindle. Now when it's done with that tool, the control is gonna put that tool back into any pocket it thinks is best. Now on machines equipped with this 30 pocket side mount tool changer, we can actually hold 31 tools. That's 30 pockets in the carousel plus one in the spindle. On machines like this VF3SS equipped with a 24 pocket tool changer, we can hold 25 tools. That's 24 plus one. So when running a program, when running a part, you're the operator changing out parts, all we care about are T numbers. We always refer to our tools by their T numbers. But when we're setting up a machine, especially for the first time, these pocket numbers are incredibly important. If we're running nothing but small diameter tools like drills, all we've got to do is load them up into the machine and run them. But if we're going to run large diameter tools like this face mill here or more than one face mill and we don't want them to bump into each other in the carousel, we've got to let the control know. We have to designate them as large tools before we load them. This is why it's so important that you know the max diameter, length and weight for any mill that you're setting up. So that begs the question, what exactly is large? How many millimeters? How many inches? Well. It's written right on the front of your machine. These decals, these stickers, tell us everything that we need to know. They're gonna tell us our max tool length, tool diameter, our max weight, um, based on our exact machine and tool changer type. But every machine is different. If you've got a 50 taper, it's definitely different than a 40 taper. If you've got an umbrella style tool changer, your max diameter, length, weight is gonna be different than if you've got a 24 pocket side mount tool changer or a 30 pocket side mount tool changer. The distance between the pockets on this 30 pocket side mount tool changer is just greater than two and a half inches. If our tool is anything bigger than two and a half inches, it must be designated on the control as L, large. Now that information is written on your decal as the E value. Uh, by coincidence, a standard Cat 40 tool holder has a V groove flange with a diameter of two and a half inches. So if you've got a tool that is sticking out past the V flange and, you, and you're running a 30 pocket side mount tool changer, that tool must be designated as large. When we set up a tool as L or large, the control is gonna put that tool away in the exact same pocket each and every time. And it's also gonna leave the adjacent pockets empty so nothing can rub into each other. If you're running one large tool, that means that you're gonna be taking up three pockets on your side mount tool changer. Two large tools are gonna to take up 
five pockets. Well, we can finally set up that large tool. I've got my five inch face mill. I know it fits the machine because I read the decal. This brings us to, to my point number one here. Find three empty pockets next to each other. This is the first thing we need to do. The easiest way to do this is to start with an empty machine. I've gone ahead and removed all the tools from my carousel, everything but the probe. I know what you're thinking. Uh, you don't always take all the tools out of your machine in between each job. In fact, you might have three empty pockets, but they're not next to each other. We can solve that problem, and we'll show you how in a minute. Right now, I'm gonna show you the easy way. And the easy way is when setting up a job, set up your large tools first and start with an empty machine. This is pretty simple when you've got an empty machine. You just look on the side of your carousel and find three consecutive empty pockets. I'm gonna choose pockets 15, 16, and 17. It doesn't really matter which numbers I'd used. Now, this brings us to my second point. We're gonna set that center empty pocket to an L. And there's a little rule here. That center pocket can't be facing the spindle at the time. If it's facing the spindle, the control doesn't know if there's a tool in the spindle or not, bad things can happen. Okay, pockets 15, 16, and 17 are empty. We need to set that center empty pocket, number 16 in this case, to a large. So we set a tool to large on our pocket tool table. To get there on a classic control, you're gonna press current command and then page up until you get to the pocket tool table. If you've got a next generation control, just press current commands and then arrow over until you get to that tab, the tool table tab. We wanna set pocket 16 to large so we can load up our large tool. So we highlight pocket 16 and press L. Immediately we see the pockets adjacent to pocket 16 are cleared, they're wiped out. Those pockets can no longer be used to hold tools. They are just used as extra spaces now for that large tool. The left column on our tool table shows our pockets. Now all of these numbers correspond to the painted numbers on the side of your tool change carousel. The right column shows our tool number. This is the tool that is in any particular pocket at a given moment. Remember, these uh, pocket numbers change with every tool change. The center column, category, displays the tool designations. If it's left blank, it's a normal tool. If it's got an L, it's a large tool. If it's got an H, it's a heavy tool. We'll mention heavy tools in a minute. So at the moment, I've got tool 10 tied to pocket 16 as my large tool, but I don't want tool 10 to be my large tool. I want tool eight, let's say, to be my large tool. To fix this, I could just come over here and enter eight and press the enter key, but it says invalid tool. Why is this? Well, this brings us to point number three. We're gonna set a unique T number, a unique T number. There can only be one tool eight on my tool table, and I've already got a tool eight on my tool table. So before we can go any further, I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna remove that tool eight. I'm gonna set it to some other tool number. I'm gonna set it to 150. And by the way, you can set your tool numbers to anything you'd like between one and 200. And now that tool eight is gone, I'm free to use it. This time it took tool eight. So now my tool eight is permanently tied to pocket 16. Every time it goes to put away this five inch shell mill, it's gonna put it back in that same pocket, pocket 16, and there will always be an empty adjacent pocket, giving it a nice cushion uh, so it doesn't bump into any other tools. And number four, you're gonna call up that large tool into the spindle, T whatever, ATC forward, and then load that large tool into the spindle by hand. But remember, and we'll say this over and over, before you load up that large tool into the spindle, make sure that those adjacent pockets are empty on both the carousel and your tool table. Now that we've got tool eight set up as a large tool on our tool table and our adjacent pockets are all empty, we can call tool eight into the spindle by going to MDI and entering T8 ATC forward. From there, we just load up our large tool. Now there are plenty of other useful features that we can set on this tool table. We can set a tool as large with the L key. We can set a tool as heavy. This will slow down the double arm during tool changes on heavy tools. But by the way, when we set up a tool as large, the control automatically slows down that double arm tool change for us. It assumes the tool is heavy. We can also clear out a category, clear out that H or L 
by pressing this space key with that row highlighted. We can also clear out a tool by entering a zero. This is gonna wipe out that pocket permanently, right, until you enter another tool number. This is useful if in the rare instance you actually end up with a broken tool pocket, you've done something terribly wrong, your machine is not down. You can always just set that pocket to zero so it won't use that pocket for tool changes until you get the part to come in. And we have the origin key. This function allows us to zero out or resequence your pocket numbers. You only want to do that if you have removed every tool from your carousel. Well, as promised, here's our worst case scenario. Now I've gone ahead and pulled a sheet metal from this carousel so we can see all of the pockets at once. Now I'd like to set pocket 10 as a large tool on my tool table, but I can't yet because those adjacent pockets aren't empty. Now I've got three empty pockets in the carousel, but they're not next to each other. I need three consecutive empty pockets, three in a row like tic-tac-toe. Here's what we'll do. I'm gonna call up an empty pocket, then call up a pocket that I'd like to be empty. We'll just repeat this process until we get three empty pockets next to each other. P15 is empty right now, so I'll command P15 ATC forward. The spindle is now empty. The tool that was in the spindle is now in pocket 15. And we now call up the pocket that we'd like to be empty. That is P11, our adjacent pocket. P11, ATC forward. Now, both pockets 10 and 11 are empty. Did you catch that? Let's rewind. P15 was empty, so we called up P15 ATC forward. We wanted P11 to be empty, so we then called P11 ATC forward. We called up an empty pocket, then the pocket that we'd like to be empty. One more to go. P5 is empty, and we want P9 to be empty. So P5 ATC forward. Then P9 ATC forward. Let's rewind that. We called up our empty pocket, pocket five. And then we called up the pocket that we'd like to be empty, pocket nine. Now we've got three consecutive empty pockets. We can now go to the pocket tool table and set that pocket 10 to large by pressing L and enter, depending on your machine. Next, we give that large pocket a unique T number, a T number that we aren't currently using anywhere else on the tool table. Finally, we just call up our tool into the spindle and load that large tool by hand. Remember, before we ever load a large tool into the spindle, we need to make sure that those adjacent pockets are clear and empty on both the pocket tool table and on the carousel. So remember, know what your maximum tool diameter is before you start setting up the job. If it's a big tool, find three empty pockets on your side mount tool changer carousel, set the center pocket to large, and load up your tools, and you can run just fine. I hope you've learned something about your side mount tool changer system. Uh, thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Thank you.